Howdy y'all, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my Pit Boss Pellet Smoker. So I just bought this a couple months ago and I've absolutely loved it. I use it at least weekly. So really I was in between a couple different brands. I was looking at the Pit Boss, Traeger, and Camp Chef. The Traeger was just out of my price range for what I needed it for. The Camp Chef and Pit Boss were pretty close, neck and neck. But I had a handful of friends that have actually bought the Pit Boss before and have actually really liked it. So when I started diving into which Pit Boss I wanted, I really wanted something with quite a bit of room. So I was looking at the 1000. Now if you've done any research on pellet smokers, you'll know, especially with Pit Boss, they have 10 different smokers around this size. And honestly, their website's pretty crappy about the information it gives you and the differences between those smokers. So I just want to give you a little bit of information on the research I did. I found about three or four different smokers at this size that I liked, all about 500 to $600 range. Tractor Supply had one, Walmart had one, Lowe's had one, and then there was the Sportsman that you could find on the Pit Boss website. So I was really leaning towards the Sportsman for a while just because I felt like the Sportsman would be better quality because it was actually sold from Pit Boss. And I know when it comes to safes and other things like that, usually they downgrade their equipment to make it a little bit cheaper so that they could be sold at something like Tractor Supply, Walmart, Lowe's, etc. However, I couldn't really find any specs on the steel thickness or anything like that. So I called their customer service. It took me two or three days to get a hold of them. And when I called them, I asked them that question. I had a couple other questions, but they assured me that the steel across all their 1,000 pit bosses was the same. Not sure if I really believe that, but I'll say I do. So Tractor Supply actually had this one on sale for 430 bucks. So it was 100 bucks off its normal price. And so I was trying to compare this one to two or three others that were very similar. And when I talked to them about it, they really said the main differences were cosmetic. Uh, and then the controller was a little bit different as well. They had told me this controller at Tractor Supply, which is the Gen 2 1000, only had one temperature probe. It said it did not have any of the P settings or any of that extra features. However, when I actually brought this home from Tractor Supply, I opened it up and it happened to be the Gen 3 model, I believe. And it had two temperature probes and it had the P settings. So I was pretty happy to see that I actually got more than what I was expecting when I bought this. Putting it together actually wasn't too bad. Probably took me an hour and a half, two hours. It seems like it's built pretty well. You know, I do have a few complaints about, you know, it just doesn't necessarily sit tight all the way against it so when I start it up you'll see some smoke escaping from around here but it it hasn't really affected me smoking or grilling anything. The hopper over here I think is like a 32, 33 pound capacity. Haven't really had a big issue with that. There's a grate here on top that not really a huge fan of because it's the hoppers start falling into this side and then they're high on one side and low on the other and you kind of have to try and stick your fingers or stick in there to push all your pellets over into that spot. One option, which I don't necessarily recommend, is if you want to avoid having to stick your hand in here, you take out the four screws, one here, 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 and here, and then you can kind of just use that to swing up, and then you can get your hand in there and adjust that, but again, I'm not promoting this, that's an unsafe thing to do. The reason that's there is for safety. The first few times I used it, I just grilled stuff. I used the sear grate in here. It's got a cool little thing here. You push to close and pull to open. I ended up smoking a pork butt and made some pulled pork. And I had a few issues with that. I got up at like five to go ahead and start it. And I went back to sleep and woke up a few hours later and the temp was just dropping. And so I came out here and checked it out and it looked like the flame was out. And so you have to be careful with that because if the flame goes out, your auger continues to pump pellets into it. And so when you go to turn it back on, you're gonna just have a massive amount of heat and a huge flame. 
So what you really have to do if that happens is you go in there, clean it out, suck up all the pellets with a shop vac or something like that, and then just start the process over again. The main reason I bought this though was for smoking venison sausage or snack sticks and stuff like that. Hopefully if I harvest a deer later in the year, I'll end up showing you how I process that and I'll do another video on me processing and making some snack sticks. Today I'm gonna to be cooking up a little bit of venison jalapeno and cheese sausage. But before I do that, I'm gonna kinda of show you the process of doing a burnout because I didn't think the instructions were really all that great. A lot of people don't read the instructions, so I figured a video may help. So when you first get your grill, you have all this kind of oil and, and particles and little things inside of it. So you really wanna burn that off and just kind of clean it up. And so what you wanna do is you'll open up the grill, go ahead and plug in your pit boss. So when you plug it in, you don't really see anything here. So you'll click the power button, that turns blue, nothing comes on the screen yet. So you'll go ahead and turn it to smoke. And what I like to do is there's a prime button here. So if you haven't put pellets in it and it's not sitting in the auger and your pellets are just in the box here, you'll want to hold the prime button until your pellets start coming out and you'll hear them start to drop. It's very important when you do a startup that you keep the lid open. If you have it closed, you can create an explosion with all the pressure building up inside. One thing to note is what happens when you turn it to smoke is it has a little coil that gets hot and if your pellets haven't started dropping into the box in there, you're not going to create a fire. And the probe that gets hot only stays hot for about 30 seconds or so. So if your pellets haven't started dropping and your probe shuts off, your pellets are just gonna keep piling in there. And that happened to me and I really wasn't sure what to do. So if that happens, Go ahead and shut it off. Make sure you pull some of your pellets out so you don't have a huge flame. Turn it back to smoke and you'll, you should see it start up. I'm not really gonna dive into the P settings in this video. When I do a video on smoking something, I'll show you how I use the P settings. Since tonight I'm just doing the start up and burn off and then I'm gonna grill some sausage, I'm just gonna show you that. So after a couple minutes, you'll start to see a little white smoke forming here. And it's gonna get pretty smoky, that's normal, don't be alarmed. While this is heating up, one thing I wanted to mention too that I noticed is the probe that is inside here that is this main temperature here, I don't feel like is very accurate. I've joined a Pit Boss Facebook group and they talk about a mod you can buy to put in here. I haven't done that yet, but I'll probably end up doing that. So what I've done to test it is one of the probes I actually have sitting here right over it and that way I can kind of get an idea of what really the temp is and then I also have a wireless probe. I use that to be able to go inside and not have to come out and keep checking this. So as you can see a ton of white smoke is coming up here. Again that is normal. You want to keep the lid open and just let the smoke go. Eventually the white smoke will go and you'll end up with a good clear smoke for smoking. So I'm not sure if you could hear that but the pellets just caught fire and the flame just started. So you'll see the smoke start to clear now as the fire is going. All right, so once all your smoke is cleared, you'll want to start the burn off process. So I would go ahead and close your lid and you can pump up the temp to whatever you want. I think the manual says either 350, 400. I'm gonna put it to 400 and you want to let it burn for about 30 minutes or so and that'll clean everything up in there. I also do this occasionally after I smoke something because it helps clean up and burn off all that grease and any of the drippings that fall into it. All right, so once you've done your burn off, you can go ahead and drop your temp back down to where you wanna cook at, or if you're not cooking today, go ahead and just shut it off. I'll go through the shut off procedure at the end of this as well. So just to note, and I'm not sure if you can see this, so I'll bring it up closer in a second here but you can see how far off these temps are. So this temp is showing 405 and that's the probe that comes internal to this. And then the one that I'm using as a probe just kind of hang in there is showing 333. So that's 70 degrees off, which is pretty bad in my opinion. So that's kind of the one downfall that I've had with this. But again, it's just kind of getting used to your smoker, knowing what your temps are and where it's actually running. And that's part of the reason why I have that probe there 
so I can gauge what the difference typically is. I got the temp about where I want it to go ahead and start my sausage. The sausage is pretty much done. If you want to get a good sear on both sides, the last few minutes of your cook time, you can op open up your sear grate and that'll get you your nice grill marks that you're looking for. So when you're done cooking and you want to shut it off, don't just unplug it. What I like to do is I will turn your knob off and I don't hit the power button quite yet. You really want the fan to keep running to just keep pumping out the air and keep it cool in there. I'll leave the lid open. Depending how hot it is, after about 20 minutes or so, you'll hear that fan shut off. At that point, you can power it down and unplug it. Also, I went ahead and bought a grill cover for this. It's just the 1000 grill cover that you can find on Pit Boss's website. I highly recommend it. If you're gonna be spending four, five, 600 bucks on a grill, you might as well take care of it. As far as cleanup goes, I recommend every four to five times you smoke or grill something, either come in here and do kind of a burn off or about every five to 10 times I'll come in and I'll take a shop vac and just clean everything off. I'll use my grill scrape and scrape everything and just get it nice and clean. If you have any questions about the Pit Boss or the reason why I chose Pit Boss over Traeger or Camp Chef, Feel free to drop a comment or shoot me an email. And I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks.